Hello. So I just got back from visiting Charlotte, North Carolina, and I went to the Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, I think it is. Anyway, I usually shop Jerry's Artorama, but this is what they had there. So anyway, I want to show you all the stuff I got. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I guess I should have cleared this off. This is my, I've been playing with landscapes lately. So, um, all right, I think this is gonna be fun. I've gotten sea sponges before, but I really like the texture of this sea sponge for uh, maybe a background, we'll play with that. Uh, here's some brushes. I, my favorite brush so far for acrylic has been these silver bristlin, and I like the bright. Um, they're a good brush. They're they're not super cheap, but they're not also you know the really expensive. And they didn't have those at Cheap Joe's, so I, I was trying a couple other brands to see what I think of them. Uh, this was like their house brand. No, not this one. This is black silver. Um, this is the one that seemed like okay a comparable. It's a Princeton Dakota. And just really nice quality. I'm actually starting to buy a little bit better brushes and take better care of them. So that's what these are, the Princeton Dakota. So I'll do a review when I see what those are like. So I got those. And then just because Windsor Newton gouache is so gorgeous, I picked out some colors that I didn't have. Well, I do have this, but I use it a lot. The Linden Green. Indigo, I'm a big indigo user. Um, this is Marigold Yellow and Permanent Yellow Deep. They had good prices, so we'll add that to my collection of better gouaches. And then I picked up a few. I have these, this set of oil pastels that I really like. This is the Mungio. Here it is, M U N. G Y O and just fabulous colors. That's actually what I used. I did um, acrylic gouache on this, but then here are the pastels and just kind of here and there. I haven't sprayed that yet. So I do love these colors, but there's a color that I've had for years um, that's a Pentel color and it's a really pale aqua. And I saw that they had it in the cray pot. These are cray pots, so I got a few more colors. This is the color I was talking about that I really like. So we'll see what these are like compared to. They feel a little less, yeah, they feel a little less oily, so that'll be interesting than the Mungyo. And I put a picture of the whole case of these on my story you know, because it's so beautiful. All right, so this is, I found, by the way, a great way to keep my oil pastels because then I can look immediately and see the color. I used to have them laying down in a box and then I found that I kept digging and digging to find the color I was looking for. And now, even though they're a little harder to put away, I can quickly get to the color that I want. And it looks pretty, doesn't it? Um, the biggest find that I had at Cheap Joe's was a type of paint that I like a matte finish, okay? That's why I tend to use um, acrylic gouache. I like the matte, here, let me get a piece here, that is, I'll pull this up so you can see better. I like paint finish that I don't, I don't like what acrylic does in terms of having sort of a plasticky um, finish. I know that I can always spray a piece afterwards with uh, a matte varnish, which I do, but just even when working with it, I just, some, I just sometimes find that acrylic has that sort of synthetic-y, shiny, so that's why I use a lot of aqua gouache. Well, aqua gouache is pricey because I, I use the whole vein, and these are little tubes, and they're, you know, $7 a piece or maybe more, depending on the color. So, you know, that can get pricey. And I also use 
the Turner Hacro Gouache, which is the same size too, really. Uh, maybe a little less expensive. And then the other type of gouache that I use is the Liquitex. But the, and this is these are all acrylic gouache. I think I need to do a class on all these types of paints because I've got so many different kinds now. I think it'd be fun to go through and show you what each one does. So anyway, that you can see they're all smallish containers and quite pricey. So when I stumbled on this uh, paint that I'm about to show you, I got pretty excited. As you see, I haven't played with it a whole lot, but I'll show it to you. And it's called Josanja. And I thought, with a name like that, it has to be made somewhere else. But it is made in the USA. Um, doesn't say where. And what attracted me is, it's a, you know, it's acrylic, but it said matte flow acrylic. So, and I've heard of matte acrylics. In fact, I have another paint that was very expensive. I'll do a separate video on it that I bought. Um, it's the Golden So Flat and it is very flat, but expensive. So again, I've been trying to find the solution for a matte paint um, at a good price. So we'll, we'll see how I like these. I played a little bit, I'll show you, but um, these were only, I wanna say three and four dollars a piece, and look at the size compared to this. So half the price, and maybe four times the, the paint volume. Yeah, probably. All right, now I played a little last night with them and I use for my white, I use gesso, um, which obviously adds a lot of good matte texture, so that helps. But let's see, <clears throat> here's the piece I played with, with these so Joe Sanjas. And I did a um, Bristol paper. And I do like, this is just like kind of the first layer for a painting. It is very matte. I don't know if you can see, but there is no sheen to that whatsoever compared to, let's see if I have anything with acrylic. I've probably already sprayed this. Yeah, I've already put some varnish on that. But you know what I mean. A, let's see. Acrylic has a sheen, like a plasticky look. So no sheen whatsoever. You can even hear how scratchy that is. It's rough, which I like. The color is intense. Um, it's a little translucent, I noticed that. So like you can see here, this yellow, you know, it, it didn't cover completely the teal underneath it. So after I bought these, um, I, I looked at the paperwork. Let's see, where did I put that? On these, and it shows that they have different levels of, of uh, translucent versus opaque. I don't know what I did with that. But on the bottle, I didn't see that. They all just say matte flow acrylic. So I'll experiment with that some more, but so far I think this is really vibrant color and no sheen. Probably doesn't sound any different. This is aqua gouache with some acrylic. You can even see which colors are acrylic because they sh have a shimmer to them. So uh, what else did I get at Jerry's? Oh, here's something else. I picked up one of these. You know, when you spread paint, um, I've got a, a large one of these that you can spread paint on a canvas. It's called a um, catalyst. So if you have a you know large painting, but I saw this and they had a whole bunch of different sizes and colors. This is the Baby Catalyst by Princeton. And so I thought when I'm starting a painting, I think it'll be fun to, you know, smear it and kind of reminds me of a cooking implement. You could really just use a kitchen spatula. Uh, so 
I'll experiment with that. And that is, that's kind of all I bought. Well, I did buy some palette paper, paper that, you know, you use as a palette. I don't know if you are familiar with this, but it's, it's nice to have. And sometimes I'll take a sheet and tape it over a piece of cardboard. Like here, here's a piece of silver palette paper that I wanted it on something more firm. And so when this gets completely yucky, um, I'll just take it off and redo it. Another sheet. Some people say you can peel the paint off of here, but I think that works better with acrylic. It doesn't work so well with acro gouache. So that is, that was my trip. I think I bought enough, don't you? I think, I think I did well. All right, keep creating. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.